Hey everyone, this is Rob from RuralWorks coming to you with our latest scene. I've called this one The Warlord's Tomb. As you can see, it features a bit of a canyon with a waterfall and a bridge going across the waterfall into the tomb. The scene is 35 wide by 25 tall and features five levels. If you look up into the right at our levels layer tool, you can see all five levels there. So we're, right now we're looking at the canyon top. Then we have what I call the stair level. Really, it's just the set of stairs and this little ramp over here. Then we can look at the bridge level, which includes our bridge and entrance into the tomb. The canyon bottom, which includes some of the tomb and the bottom of the canyon, kind of at the level of the water. And then lastly, our riverbed. So this entire river on this level is actually an overhead tile. So this is actually a below water level. So I'll run you guys through the scene as I normally do. Bring in our tester here. So you see if you place a tester on this level, he will appear below water. The reason he can see above ground right now is because I've set some of these tiles as roof tiles so they can see them from below. And I think it makes sense. He wouldn't be able to see necessarily the ground, but if you're looking up through the water, you'd be able to see the walls of the canyon as you look upwards. And so this entire level is just below water. Hopefully you can hear in the background some of the underwater sounds that are being made. And then if I take our token, nearer to the waterfall. You can kind of start hearing some of the waterfall fall sounds in there. Okay, so that's the riverbed level. If we move up 10 feet, we'll get to our canyon bottom. Here immediately you should be able to hear some of the stream sounds I've added. So if you can see there's all these sound bubbles on these two different levels and levels above, so just keep that in mind. If you don't like them, you can just click on them, right click on them from the ambient sound controls. So we go back to our token. Nothing really going on in this level other than the images themselves. So if we put ourselves up to level 20, this is where most actions occur for this scene is on level 20. If we have our token here on the bridge, you can see there's a hashed tile on the bridge as well as on the stairs. So those indicate two traps. These traps would be controlled using control panels on the bottom of the margin. So we have our stair trap controls here in the orange and our bridge controls in the blue. So I'll just run through the controls quickly so we can have intact. If you hit the intact button, it just takes away the trap. If you hit the broken, it changes it into a broken version. And then you can see there's another hash tile that kind of appears. The second hash tile is just an elevation drop. So when a token, if a token were to walk into it, it would fall down to elevation 10 instead. Next, we have our bridge trap active or reset. So if we hit that, it'll reset and you can see the trap is in place. And then lastly, we have our bridge manual trigger. So if you don't want to use the hashed tile to trigger the trap, you can get rid of it. And then you can click this little play button on the bottom here and just manually activate the trap. So you can hear some sounds play and then this tile is replaced so now people would fall down when they try to walk over the bridge area. So I guess I'll just show you guys quickly how the trap works. It works functions much like my previous traps in other scenes. So as soon as a token enters the trap, GM will be sent a message indicating the game is paused. You can see it's being paused down here. Someone's at, someone has entered the bridge trap, activate trap on a yes, the image will change and sound will play. Token elevation will be dealt with separately. So I'll just say if you hit no, nothing happens. You can unpause and the game just continues. But if you enter the trap inside, hit yes. So the sounds have changed. Now the next tile has been displayed, indicating that any token that walks here now will now be dropped into the river. And the second message is sent to the GM asking, do you want to set the triggering tokens elevation to zero feet? Below water riverbed level, you may roll saves before, before deciding. Damage is not automated. Again, hitting no would just leave the token at this elevation. You can continue on as you like. Hitting yes. We'll have that splash sound and set the token below water. So now he is kind of swimming in the water. So I'm just going to put him back up here. Now, if we were to just set the bridge to intact, so we no longer have that hash to tile, we can just walk across freely. This is set up similarly to our stair trap. So if somebody steps on the hashed tile on the stairs, the GM is again sent a message. Someone's under the stair trap. Do you want to activate the trap on a yes? Images will change and sounds will play. Token elevation will note separately, so you can hit yes. You can see, it looks like the stone's kind of fallen away now. It's a little rock fall sound is played. And we have our token here still on elevation 20. However, you can say, do you want to it will ask you again, do you want to set the token elevation to zero feet, indicating he's slid down the cliff and into the water. You hit yes. 
You hear the splash sound play, and now our token is again set to the elevation beneath the water. And we'll run over the controls for this. So in the bottom margin, we have our stair controls here for tile five, this little red box. If we want the stairs intact, we just hit the intact button. If you want the stairs broken, we can have them broken automatically. We can reset the trap. You can see the hash tile reappears. And if we don't want to have that, we can just set it to, to intact and we have the manual trigger. And we can just manually trigger the trap there using this play button. Now, just of note, manual trigger as well as the bridge trap manual trigger will not automatically change the token's elevation. So that's something you would have to do manually if you decide to use the manual triggers. So those are the two traps outside. You can see there's interaction points on the stairs if we want to head up the stairs instead. So I'll take us up to the next level. We're just going to go across the bridge. First thing I want to note when we're crossing the bridge is you kind of see this entrance into the cave. However, you can't see into the cave from the bridge, but when, when you really should be able to. So just remind your players, remind yourselves, if you have a token selected, you can just hover over this area, which is a roof tile, and it'll allow you to see into the corridor inside the cliff base. So just handy, and if you scroll off, the roof is gonna reappear. Just note, there are actually two tiles. So there's one here just for the blocks at the front, and then there's another one for the cliff. So as long as you're hovering over both at the same time, they'll both occlude. Okay, so our token can then move in. Now note, it is quite dark. That is because I have put in a region here to control the darkness. That can be done through our region controls. You can see these big orange blobs. Those are the dark ones. There's a bunch of other colored ones over here. We'll go over those in a second. So the darkness ones are these two. You can see when I hover over it, darkness elevation 20 is highlighted or darkness elevation 10 is highlighted. So that will just mean darkness works as normal in these areas. So we might want to have give this character a light or it's a bit hard to see, but there are torches on the walls. You can just double click these and they will add flame and light beacons inside. These are overhead. So if you move your token underneath, it will appear over top. Now you know, might notice that there's three numbers here on the screen, one, two, and three. That means there's three trap tiles or three pressure plates here on the, on the floor. They will cause a trap to activate. So we'll go over that. So first you might notice in the top left, there's a click to manually trigger spear trap. So you can click this play button and I'll shoot two spears across the room. And then it automatically resets for you. We go into the top margin, see a pressure plate controls. So right now, only one pressure plate is active. I'm just gonna activate them all so you can see how it works. Now we can see pressure plate one, two, and three are all active. So we can move our token into one of these. You hear a little noise play. You can see the pressure plate has actually sunk into the floor now. And the GM has sent a message indicating that the game is paused and someone has stepped on the pressure plate trap. If you want to fire the spear, the trap will reset automatically. Okay, you yes. You see the two spears fire across. No damage is not automated for these spears, nor are attacks. It's just the visual image and sounds that are played. And then when the trap is reset, you can see two spear tips again in the eyes of this face that are kind of being built into the wall. So I'll shoot it again just so you guys can see the spears reappear. Just a bit of a visual clue you might be able to give your players that the trap has been reset or there is a trap there in the first place. And if you move over to the other ones, same thing will happen. The sound will play that the pressure plate is sunk and the trap will be fired. The way I would run this is since it's firing two spears, whoever's in tile one or three might be attacked by both spears. If you're in tile two, you probably only get hit by one. And if someone gets hit by one of the spears in tile one, I don't think that attack would go on and hit a person in, in tile three. So a spear trap here at the entrance to the tomb. Now you might notice these doors. You have token selected there is no door indicator i've made these special doors the controls are in the top margin again door controls for room a so we can just hit open see this nicely slide open you can hit close doors will sit. i have a slide into the position to be closed so how do these doors open i kind of left that up to you to decide how the players might open the doors maybe they need a magic key another idea i had was kind of put this little latch on the wall here on the north wall. Maybe they need to pull on this ring, this loop that's built into the wall in order to open the door. Part of this could also use the traps. So if you decide to turn all of your pressure plates off and you want to use the manual trigger instead, maybe it triggers when somebody pulls on the latch here built into the wall. So if they might pull on this 
and then their four friends who are standing around in the rest of the room might get targeted by this trap as you fire. So that was kind of my idea there. Regardless, trap could fire when the door is opened if you wanted to. So if we were to continue in, we can open up the door and our tokens can kind of fly in. You can see, kind of hard to see, but there are interaction points here that can be double clicked if you want to go down to the canyon bottom level into the tomb. If you want the scene to enter some other dungeon, I would suggest removing these interaction points. I'll show you how to do that on the next level. Uh, and then these stairs could just lead into another scene as opposed to the tomb that I've placed here. I'll show you the tomb first. So our tokens can use the interaction points to easily go down to the next level. If you want to remove those interaction points so they can actually descend here and instead would descend into another scene, you can just go to your tile controls, select these and delete them. And then those stairs could just lead to another scene instead of this area. Since we're here looking at what this scene will come into the area, uh, Obviously just the statue at the start kind of splits into two and we come into the warlord's tomb. So again, torch here can just be double clicked on and off. Double click each of the skeletons to remove them or add them back in. So you can see easily able to add them in or out. So if the, if the skeletons were to rise up, say one of the adventurers comes over here to inspect the sword and as soon as he touches the sword, maybe all these skeletons rise to attack. You could have hidden tokens here for skeletons and then remove the images. Totally up to you, just there a little bit of customization option for you. If we go up into the top margin here, we also have a cycle all skeleton images. So if you don't want to go around and click, click on them all, you can just hit this button and it'll just cycle all of them. Be careful though, because it does cycle all of them. So if one of them is missing, it's going to keep that one there. Okay, let's get back out of the scene, quit out of this level, go back up the bridge level. We're gonna cross the bridge. We're gonna go up all the way to, up the stairs to the stair level. Two stairs, yep. Two stairs, yep. And now we're at the canyon top. First thing I'll just note is... There's water sounds. And as you get closer to the waterfall, it sounds more like a waterfall. And now here your token is like very close to the edge, so if you decide to step over, he's going to fall down to the bridge level here, 20 feet. If he steps over again, he's down 10 more feet to the bottom. And then the bottom level. Now, how did that happen? Let's move over here. If you go again over to your region controls in the left margin, you can see I have all these regions. We discussed these two at the top. Those are darkness regions. Those just add darkness to the areas. And here you can see there are a bunch of different colored regions. So I think what's easy, most easily demonstrated from the top. So if we look over at our list here, these blue is a level drop from level elevation 40 to 30. So if a token ever enters these blue areas, they're gonna descend from level 40 to level 30. Next up is level is this yellow area. Yellow drops you from 30 to 20. So if you come into the blue area, Go down to level 30, become the yellow area, you go down to level 10, and then if you enter these bottom orange areas, this is level drop 20 to 10, so this will bring you all the way down to the bottom, elevation 10. There are a couple of special areas though, so there's this pink region and this purple region, so the pink region drops you from 40 to 20, so a bit more of a drop, a 20 foot drop, and the purple area takes you from 30 to 10, so from elevation 30 down to the canyon bottom. And I've tested this, it does work pretty well, but just be aware that players might just <laughs> without realizing it, be descending the canyon when they step over the edges of the cliff. So I'll just demonstrate how this might work in a couple of places. So you have your player, he's at 40 feet. He comes to the edge here, he's like, oh, I just want to jump down those extra 20 feet onto the bridge level. You can see he descends first this to the stair level, 10 feet lower at elevation 30. And if he steps off again, he's down to level 20. So now he's here on the bridge level. And if he tries going back, he can't go back. They are one way only. So he's kind of stuck down there now. This area, I think, provides some good opportunities to have like multi-level combats. Maybe when the players get down here, guardians from the top start shooting arrows at them, or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe there's a, another group of adventurers that are trying to find the same tomb. And as the players get down here, those other adventurers find them from the top and they can start shooting arrows or attacking them from above. Okay, so that was one place. And then if you were to just walk across the bridge, you're fine. But as soon as you step off the bridge, you jump down and you're back on elevation 10 foot, elevation 40. And I'm just gonna speak here. Smart PCs must say, hey, maybe this bridge is trapped. Maybe it looks weak. We don't want to go across it. Why don't we descend from the top of this side so they could climb along the cliff top here on the canyon top. As they step over, they'll come down to elevation 30. Now they're kind of on the tomb entrance. 
at elevation 30, so they're above it. And they can go one more down, and it drops them down all back into elevation 20, and they're now on the bridge level. So I think it's set up so that no matter how tokens move, they will always get down to the correct elevation. If you don't like these elevation automatic elevation drops, you come into your region controls and you can just hit, hit these little delete buttons for the levels drops or the darknesses if you don't like them. And then you can see here in the middle where the bridge is, there is no automatic drop, but the problem is if we have a bridge, the bridge is broken, tokens that step here should be dropping. So that is why I added in this tile it takes up that space. So whenever the bridge is broken, and it's not there, this tile will appear and automatically descend players into the river. That's the Spore Lord's Tomb. There is a journal entry as well here for the Warlord's Tomb guide. It's in the journal companion for the Rune Works Wilds and Rune Sea. And it just goes over some of the details on the traps, how they work, and what you can do to use them. Okay, that's it for this week, guys. It looks like the Patreon poll has completed and I will be working on the Weary Wyvern. I am a bit worried that that's going to be a bigger scene, so I might ask you guys for suggestions on previous scenes that you would like me to make some sort of update to. Like, for instance, I think someone asked me to make a lava flow version instead of a river for this very scene here. That's the sort of thing I'm looking for, because the second time of the month, if the Weary Wyvern does take a little extra time, I might just spend the second half of the month improving past maps or making variations for past maps. So if there's anything you were hoping to see, would like to see, send me a note on Patreon or Discord. If that's the case, I'll try to make those variations. Thanks everyone. Hope you liked the scene and I will talk to you in two weeks. Bye for now.